Today's <laughs> is a culmination of nine months journey for these teams. They've been working on their business development this whole time. They've been participating in workshops. They've been smacking out homework and challenges with NZTE. They've been prepping themselves, growing their businesses and looking at how they might export into international markets, just like any other New Zealand company wanting to internationalize. During today's event, the teams are going to be involved in what we call a pitch off, and that'll be what determines our program winner. And that winner will have the opportunity to travel to Expo 2020 Dubai early in 2022. So that's an amazing opportunity to showcase their product in the New Zealand Pavilion. So super exciting, they're ready, they're pumped, and they put a lot of time and a lot of effort into today's pitch. I hear actually in Dubai, as well as getting along to the pavilion itself, there's some really amazing international youth activities lined up. So their time will definitely be made the most of while they're there. So let's take a quick look at the five teams. They're just coming on screen now. Thanks, Kelly. And uh, as we come up, let's have a wave from everyone. Let's have your best wave, not just a wave, like a real, like a wave, a good wave. Like a really put it out there kind of a way. Holly, you've got one in you. All right. So, and maybe just give a wave when I call out your name so we know um, who's who. We've got Green Kiwi Supplements. We've got Max from Green Kiwi Supplements, a vertically integrated olive leaf supplement company from Sunny Kitty Kitty. We have a Balro Health raw Barbary supplements to help those suffering from acne. And these guys are based in Otako, Otago. Keto Sack an environmentally friendly keto meal solution company without the emphasis on traditional meat and dairy inclusions based in Kitty Kitty Door in Hamilton, Devet Groves. We have NDLR, the neurodiverse learning resource company who create learning resources designed to support children with intellectual disabilities and Maya's based in Whangarei, which looks very sunny by the looks of it, Maya. And finally, we have Holly from Tai Whenua, who provides sustainable housing solutions in the form of recycled shipping containers. And Holly's based in Tamaki Makoto up in Auckland there. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you guys in the next little while. I'd also like to take this um, early opportunity to introduce our amazing judges who are from NZTE and NZ at Expo. So as you may know, this is a Dragon's Den style event. So the judges will have questions for the pitches. And amongst our judges, there is a wealth of international business experience across these judges. And we're really, really lucky to have them on board this afternoon. So uh, in this order, we have Clayton Kimpton, who is New Zealand's Commissioner General to Expo 2020 Dubai. Thanks, Clayton. We have Sarcha Young, General Manager, Customer Solutions at NZTE. And finally, we have the amazing Jamie Tahiwi, customer manager extraordinaire from NZTE. <laughs> and before we get started, um, a couple of housekeeping rules. I won't give you a, a health and safety because I'm not where you are, but um, even on Zoom, we have these rules. So audience, if you could make sure that you're on mute with no video for the duration of our session, that'd be great. So we can make sure that our pictures are the stars of our show. Between each pitch, we'll have a two minute break for the judges to deliberate. And during that time, we'll have a, we'll have a chat with the pitchers um, so you can have some time with them. We encourage you to use the Zoom chat function at the bottom to ask questions or you can give feedback. Um, all really positive, I'm sure. So feel free to get involved because that'll make this a really good interactive time ahead of us. So to the main event, uh, let's get this show started. Our first pitcher is Max from Green Kiwi Supplements up in Kitty Kitty. So the floor is all yours, Max. All right, just checking you guys can see that all good? Yep, you're good. You can, cool. As a Kiwi, I've always had a unique connection to the land. Growing up in a farming family, to me, it's always been about understanding how we can produce the very best product whilst caring for our land and our people. As a young entrepreneur, it just seemed crazy to me why we weren't applying this collective indigenous belief system of caring for our land and our people to an industry which is so focused on naturally improving the health and wellness of their consumers. This is what resonates with me when I hear kaitiakitanga. 
We're shaking things up in the natural health product space with a fresh perspective that's focused on our origin. You see, in an expanding market industry for the production of olive oil in New Zealand, it means more waste that our growers have to process, more olive leaves being dumped as an organic byproduct to this industry. Here at Green Kiwi, we take this waste to manufacture a first to market New Zealand grown olive leaf supplement. Rich in antioxidants and plant phenols, the active compound oleuropine is shown to support cardiovascular health and immune system response and have an oxygen radical absorbance capacity that's five times more powerful than vitamin C and two times more powerful than green tea. 100% natural and 100% made in New Zealand. This is Green Kiwi Olive Extract. As Fernmark license holders, we are recognised by the New Zealand government as a business which upholds to the New Zealand values of ingenuity, kaitiaki and integrity. And we're so passionate about reflecting the New Zealand story through all that we do. With the UAE Dietary, <clears throat> when I worked with Mark from NZTE on selecting the UAE Dietary Supplements Market, it became clear that due to our unique value proposition being underpinned by our origin, the Recognition or Consumer Association of New Zealand would be the main critical success factor. What we found was the UAE sees NZ as trustworthy, having a clean, pure growing environment and innovative. These are the exact values we as a business want to leverage off when positioning ourselves in front of our UAE consumer. With the UAE dietary supplements market expecting to reach 156 million by 2026, consumers are overwhelmed with different options. However, through working with New Zealand tech company Trust Codes on a purpose-built blockchain platform, we're ensuring full traceability and scientific validation for our UAE consumer. A simple swipe of our Trust Code with their smartphone camera and Green Kiwi Supplements is able to provide the scientific evidence and guaranteed authenticity behind the very bottle that they're holding. Vital in a market where consumers are so well educated in making informed purchasing decisions on all that they buy. While it may seem like the ideal market, we also discovered the UAE has a very strict and complex regulatory system, a costly hurdle which we'll have to manage. So we've made a projection of $100,000 being required to explore this market. Due to this large expenditure, we've labelled this as a capital barrier to entry and have decided that a strategic and fiscally prudent thing to do would be to ensure strong coverage in the local market while we are well underway with nationwide rollout across Hardy's health stores in New Zealand and the business would be able to achieve an export free sales certificate, further coverage would be required to successfully fund the exploration of the UAE market. Positioning ourselves as a premium natural health supplement in the UAE allows Green Kiwi Olive Extract to target the niche market of affluent health conscious Emirati. Through approaching a nationwide distributor, we'll have the speed to market whilst avoiding the saturated direct consumer digital marketing space, <clears throat> allowing us to expand into a B2C channel as the business scales. He tangata, What is the most important thing in the world? It is people, it is people, it is people. And without the friendships that I've built with the fantastic businesses and mentors who have backed me along the way, I'd never be where I am today. Not to mention the generous down to earth support of the Young Enterprise Scheme and the two years that I've taken part in this fantastic program. Now it's my time to say thanks for all their time. Supplements with a conscience, that's Green Kiwi. Kia ora. Amazing. Thanks, Max. Really, really good. Um, and, and an incredible product, I know, having watched it for the last couple of years. Um, so, as you know, this is a dragon style, uh, Dragon's Den style event. Uh, and our three dragons, they are very friendly, I can tell you that, but they do have some questions for you. And I'm sure that um, uh, you'll be able to handle them with great grace. So, judges, I'll first throw to you, Clayton, please. Thanks, Rachel. Um, hey, thanks, Max. That was a, an awesome presentation. I'd just like to have a, uh, a, my question relates to your entry into the market. 
um, you referred to the UAE, and I just, I, I just, I might have missed it, but just like to talk to you about what your, what the timing and strategy is once you've got the New Zealand market, you know, well, well uh, established. What, what, what you'd see, how you'd actually get into it. So there's a, um, that's a great question. Um, the UAE municipality, uh, when we look through the regulations, it's about a two-year-long period for the registration. Um, after talking to one of our mentors who has experience in the market, uh, we're looking at perhaps entering through a, a free trade zone, which will speed up that process. And then if that doesn't work, our contingency plan would be to, I, I essentially, I guess it would be to tweak the product because uh, there's a functional foods regulation, which is a bit more, I guess, looser. I guess you could yeah. say it like that. Um, and you can think of that like how they get money honey into that market. Um, which is very popular. So we could either tweak the product and uh, change it to, I guess, a functional food, and that would speed up that registration process and also lower down the cost. So, yeah, that's, I guess, Definitely. our plan. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Max. I might hand to Sancho for your question. <clears throat> Thanks, Max. Um, what I really liked about your presentation was your understanding of your end consumer. So you clearly understand uh, that, that persona very well. Um, I'm interested in your sales and marketing strategy. How does your end consumer um, like to buy this product? Yeah, sure. Um, so what we, yeah, what we found was there's obviously a huge social media presence um, in UAE with one of the highest penetration rates for social media marketing in the world. Um, so our marketing through our distribu uh, distributor would probably go, I guess, hand in hand. So we would organise the marketing for them, and that would, the, ma the majority of it would be through social media. Um, and our when we looked into the market, it showed that the UAE, the uh, Emirati, should I say, they also have quite a good uptake of um, social media or digital marketing. So that would be our go-to. Um, and then, of course, as the education builds, you know, on the product and our brand presence increase, increases, um, we would move to, to more large scale uh, physical uh, promotion strategies. And that's how I guess we'd market it in the future. Thanks. Thank you. Jamie. Jamie, okay, so uh, terrific pitch, Max. Um, very strong and love the branding. Green Kiwi has to work, right? So well done on that. Here's my question though. Um, uh, it's about what, in terms of your research, what did you discover in terms of the competitive landscape? Um, yeah, what, what's what's your feedback there? Uh, yep, so it's, it is quite a competitive market. Um, but this, what we found was that the majority of the products in the market, um, they weren't, there's not very many New Zealand products in, uh, like as in, you've got Manuka over there, uh, and there's a few other New Zealand origin products which are in the market. Um, and I guess our approach would be to take the New Zealand story to a new bioactive and apply it to that market. And through our research of, New Zealand's uh, presence and recognition, we've shown that we are quite strong over there. Um, so that's sort of where we would fit into that competitive landscape. Uh, but no doubt it's it's very competitive as we've seen with um, that, that statistic of um, 156 million USD. So, you know, it's comprehending of growth rate is quite fast um, and more and more products have definitely been brought to the market. So a strong market origin presence uh, combined with a, yeah, a very strong USP, I think you can probably crack the market provided the distributor is quite good. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Awesome. So Thanks. if those are, uh, uh, if those are uh, questions from the judges, they were great. Well done, Max, for answering those really well. Uh, we're going to send our judges virtually off to a deliberate separate uh, to a um, separate Zoom room for a few minutes just for a deliberation. So we'll let that happen. And in the meantime, Max, you and I are going to catch up. Okay, and cool. Everyone. Everyone's in on it. So everyone, if, if this is the, the time now, if you've got any questions for Max or you wanted to um, add in any advice or a great context for him, so I know he's big on context. So if you have any there, feel free to put them in. But really great feedback there, Max. It, um, the comments are awesome pitch. That was great. Look forward to buying some of the UAE. Very proud of you. Um, that's that's from Gary. That feels like someone oh, who knows you. Thanks, Gary. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really, really, really good mix. So my question to you is, um, you know, what's been your favourite moment so far in the build of, of olive extract? I think um, I think the, my favourite part was probably when, I guess you could say that when I started, it was quite, like, it was quite, um, you know, you, you start into it and you don't really understand it properly. And as you discover more, I remember when we found out that the New Zealand's climate provided not only a, I guess, a market origin advantage in terms of our um, reputation, but also our, uh, our unique, uh, of course, we've got a very temperate climate over here. Uh, we've got a low soil turnover and all those things. We found actually through research with Pan Food New Zealand that our olive leaves are naturally superior over that of imported sources. Um, and that was probably like one of those points where I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, um, this is really, really cool because it's providing a functional benefit and uh, I guess you could call it a story benefit. You know, you, you've got that reputation in New Zealand that can play your advantage there. So yeah, I think that probably was one of the most enjoyable. Yeah. Can your product, um, can the product, is it for any age or is it for a more specific bracket? Like what, uh, help me get younger or what's the story? <laughs> um, so uh, it, it's very high in antioxidants. Um, so that's your cell health. So yeah, it, it would um, it would support healthy aging, uh, but it's it, it's primary, our, our consumer is more of the older uh, bracket where you're getting those health concerns like your cardiovascular health. Um, it's, yeah, the, the products, there's been a few clinical trials into the into olive leaf application for cardiovascular health, uh, cholesterol levels, uh, LDL cholesterol levels, that is. Um, and the results from that have been fantastic. Um, and then, but yeah, written overall, it's immune system response. I mean, you're feeling sick, you take it, and um, you'd, you'd hope that your, you know, your body obviously responds in the right way. Everybody's different. Um, everybody's body's different, if that makes sense. Um, and then, yeah, you'd feel that therapeutic benefit. So, yeah. yeah. I'm just really happy you didn't put me in that bracket, the kind of older cardiovascular. <laughs> <laughs> As you know, we were, we were going to have a moment, Max. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, tell me, how's the balance gone with schoolwork and, and building Green Kiwi? Because, you know, you've been building and building and building and at the same time studying and studying. So how does, how does that work? Um, probably this year better than last year, um, to tell you the truth. That's because... I think it's also, because well, I'm through NCA, so it's like you, you can apply some of the business, uh, what you learn from business, for example, your business plan or your, your pitch, you can submit the different subjects. So you can kill sort of two things with one stone and you can, yeah, you can, at the end of it, because you've taken back that time, it might not be a quicker option, but it's definitely provides a great result uh, for both, you know, your business and your NCA studies. So yeah, a bit tough but at times, but definitely getting better. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. Oh, hey, well, Max, good luck. Loved hearing yeah. some more about Green Kiwi and seeing the next um, leg of your journey. Our judges are back. So awesome. um, we will jump out of here. Great. Awesome. And the great feedback keeps coming in. And now it's really lovely to see you, Maya. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia to be here. Paiana Kwe. Awesome, awesome. Close? <laughs> Sorry. Amazing. Nothing you say will be wrong. This is your time and, and, and um, I'm probably distracting you with, you know, just a couple of settling in questions. So you've got this. You've got this. I'm yeah. going to pass it over to you now. So we've got our next pitch from Maya from NDLR from Whangarei. Over to you, Maya. Kia ora. Just give me a sec. We all good? Perfect. Uh, is your, were you putting um, slides up? Yeah. Did they not come up? Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we have time. Okay. Awesome. We're away. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Welcome to the 21st century, the future, a place of equal opportunity and unfathomable social and economic development. The first world has it all, political and economic sustainability, high standards of living, and a significant lack of suitable resources for children living with intellectual disabilities. Kia ora, I'm Maya, CEO of NDLR. 
NDLR has spent the past three years researching and developing a line of bilingual instructional children's books called I Go to the Toilet, Kahaere Ho Kite Fare Iti, and I Go to School, aimed at addressing the growing demand for support in the disabled community. NDLR's story started three years ago, but mine started six years ago when my brother Zane was diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and Grin 2B syndrome. As my brother grew older, I couldn't help but notice his dejection as he struggled to gain the independence he grave, craved as he watched his classmates learn things he just couldn't seem to understand. I knew I needed to help. I created NDLR to provide my brother with high quality resources to support his journey to independence. Like Aotearoa at the 2020 Expo, Kaitiakitanga has been a major theme of business for NDLR, from conception to general business practices. Kaitiakitanga refers to the concept of caring for people in place. From the beginning of our conception, we have made it a, to, uh, made it a goal to be as environmentally friendly as possible by using eco-friendly printing and delivery systems. But caring for people is where NDLR really shines. NDLR is catering to a market that has been consistently underrepresented. Our product keeps the needs of the neurodiverse community at the forefront of development, from a soft color palette made to prevent sensory overload, to easily understood first person wording, to aid comprehension and encourage communication. NDLR has built a community of speech language therapists, health professionals, diverse organizations, and families who take care of each other through collaboration. IMEA is a group of countries containing India, India, the Middle East, and Africa. People of determination is what the UAE government uses when referring to people with disabilities. This terminology was introduced in an effort to reaffirm the country's commitment to integration. In 2016, Dubai in particular set a goal to become one of the world's most disabled-friendly cities by 2020 and invested nearly four million New Zealand dollars to make the city more accessible. These positive steps Dubai has taken to support their disabled community indicates our product has a large market in the UAE and potential for financial success. Our main target market is parents and caregivers of children with intellectual disabilities, but we also have secondary target markets of companies that work with neurodiverse children, as well as neurotypical children who are learning the skills we teach. Due to COVID-19, NDLR, oh shoot, sorry. Due to COVID-19, NDLR oh, has modified its initial plan for international expansion into its main target market. It has become increasingly difficult and expensive to ship internationally. Because of this, we have decided to sell our books internationally as eBooks on Amazon. This, I'm so sorry. This option still poses difficulties such as Amazon's commission, increased income, and market flooding. What is happening? Okay, I'll just keep going. Although these issues aren't a major, um, uh, although these issues aren't major because positives of ebooks align with my business goals. Ebooks give us the opportunity to have our books translated in any language, as well as making our books more accessible and affordable. As we are a social enterprise, profit isn't our priority, so commissions and decreased income isn't de detrimental as long as we can keep producing and selling our products. The third difficulty of market, uh, is market flooding, which occurs in ebooks due to how fastly they can be produced. My solution is a good market strategy utilizing our second target market, organizations that work with neurodiverse in individuals. Zaid and Shedra are examples of organizations that work with the neurodiverse community in Dubai. These organizations aim to help people with disabilities increase social empowerment. NGLR would aim to get these organizations, uh, uh, aim to work with these organizations to get our physical books in the UAE, as we can send high quantities directly to our target market, as well as selling directly to these organizations. I hope we can use their existing platforms and knowledge of the UAE market to market our products. The 2020 World Trade Expo is an amazing opportunity to generate awareness for the neurodiverse community. Kaitiakitanga is when New Zealand and the neurodiverse community is built on, and I'm so excited to share that to the world. So now, are you ready for the 21st century, a place of equal opportunity and political and economic sustainability, high standards of living, and suitable resources for children living with intellectual disabilities? We sure are. Thank you. 
It's awesome, Maya. You should give yourself a huge pat on the back. And do you know what? That sort of thing with the slides, as someone put on the um, on the chat line there, they're like, we have all been there, trust me. But your story is so good and your um, the books and the, the reason you're doing it is so deep that, you know, that was amazing. Really, really great feedback on the chat line. So let's, um, yeah, you got this. Don't worry about those slides. Hey, let's jump to our judges there. And maybe this time we'll start with um, Sancha. A great recovery. Uh, Maya, you are a terrific presenter and I loved um, the heart of where your idea came from. So, so well done. Um, I'm really, look, I think this is a really ambitious uh, opportunity you're going after. I'm really interested um, in terms of your research, what you learned about how you'll need to tailor your books um, for the market. Um, well, for the market, um, obviously language is a barrier, um, for books especially. So, um, that's why we chose to do eBooks so we can skip that, you know, just get translated. It doesn't cost anything to make except for commissions, obviously. Um, but you know, there's, some um, cultural things like religions that you'd have to keep in mind, um, hijabs, modesty, um, that's the major things that we'd have to look out for in that market, I would say. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Peyton. Kia ora, Maya. That was a Kia great um, uh, presentation. And I love the, where, as, as Sandra said, where the heart of your um, the business comes from. And it's a really great expression, expression of caring for people. Uh, and, and place and the way you're doing it. Just tell me um, a little bit more. I, I think your ebook idea is fantastic. The the market barriers to entry are actually low. Um, but can you tell me a little bit more about how you're you're proposing to do that through Amazon, as and actually get people to to know that your product is there and and to and to buy it? Um, well, um, the way that we found we got our book out there in New Zealand. Um, was really with working with those organizations. Um, the neurodiverse community is so accepting with everything and all these amazing new products that have never been a thing before. So they're all super, super keen to help. And that's why I said that we wanted to work with those organizations in Dubai so they can help us with the cultural stuff, help us make our books mm. like, you know, appropriate and, um, you know, they know how to market <laughs> um, in Dubai, which is obviously I don't live in Dubai, so it's and, a bit difficult. And you're right, this market uh, is, is, has a real focus on people of, of yeah. determination, so it's, it's, it's right for that. Yeah, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you, Clayton, and well done, um, Maya. Um, yeah, my question is around what, what kind of capabilities you might need to have in place. Um, to really launch and enter this this great product. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, say for example, I mean, um, will you find sort of financial capabilities, or you might need some marketing and branding support? What what have you thought much around? You know, how ready are you, and what what resources will you need to sort of to acquire or develop? Yeah. Well, financially, we're fine. Um, ebooks obviously don't cost anything and we've already got a whole bunch of um our real books in stock so um that's good marketing um and marketing is probably the most difficult part just considering how ginormous the UAE is and how different it is everywhere um so that is probably the biggest barrier for us as a company um yeah <laughs> Awesome. Hey, thanks, Maya. Thanks to our judges uh, for their questions. I know that you're going to be um, zipped off into a room now and I get to spend some time with Maya. This is actually turning to my favourite part where I get to hang out with you by myself. Well, you know, and 70 others. But so we'll have the judges zoom off there. Amazing. Hey, Maya, really great feedback. I don't know if you can see it from your end, but um, Devorah has said, what a wonderful big sister to start a company with your brother as an inspiration. Hashtag integrity central. Awesome pitch. You didn't need the slides for such a compelling product, which I 100% agree with. 
Hey, so let me ask you, what is your brother's favorite book of the one that you have done? Uh, his favorite is this one because uh, it has a digger in it. And every time I read it to him, he loves to point out that it has a digger in it. So <laughs> that's his favorite book because his yeah. favorite toys are diggers. So yeah. Oh, it's awesome. Um, who else is in your company? Was it just you or? Um, it's just me. Yeah, I started it with someone else, but yeah. That's cool. And so, how was that? How did how is it working as a as a um in a solo space building mm. your business? It was very um different because I had built this business with someone else for two years, mm. and then COVID came. He left, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, but like. I think that this program has really like supported me because like I've had these group of people that have been there and I can like sorry I, I no, can be there I and they can talk to me and yeah you know what it is it, it's such a big build up and then yeah. you know it's just like yeah. oof, here it goes and then all yeah. the emotions yeah that's a good that's thing good though. yeah no no tears are a good thing it just means you've just given it everything yeah. and now you can take a breath and listen to the other pictures and um irrespective of how this afternoon goes you've already yeah. wanted to get to this point yeah. it's, such a, um, it's such a win so yeah it's, a, it's interesting learning by yourself so what would be the I guess if there was anyone who was on the line who was thinking about doing this what would be a piece of advice that you could share with them um I mean, it was really fun, so I'd say go for it. <laughs> um, I think you need to just know, like, yourself and what you have to do in your life and your year and see if it's, like, okay for you. Because I did, like, honestly, I did find it difficult um, this yeah. year, um, just keeping up with year 13, and this is very time consuming so yeah just make sure you know that you can like at least commit a little bit of time to it and just do it and have fun and enjoy yourself and it's super fun and you meet some amazing people and yeah <laughs> sorry that was a bit long <laughs> no no we have time the judges are um the judges that they, they'll let me know when the um when the judges jump back in so we have time and if anyone have any questions for Maya let me know um, Imogen Lomax has said that gorgeous boys do love their diggers. So I don't know if you <laughs> yes. know Imogen, but oh, well, she, maybe she knows your brother and how much um, he loves diggers there. Um, you know, the, the, oh, the judges have just come back. So I was going to ask you about how you do your research, but um, I'll come back to them maybe at the end if we've got time, because it's a really big topic and it takes a lot of thought. But hey, Maya, thank you very, very much. Now, me thank you. It was really good. Kilda, thank you. Alrighty, hey, so we are on to our third pitch now. We're going to Otipoti. We're going down to Dunedin and we're going to hear from Robert and Alex from Abel Row. So the mic is yours, guys. And I know you have somebody assisting you, Abby, um, managing the slides. So also hi to Abby. Kia ora on the slide there. I like it. I see your thumb. I see you there. Over to you guys. <laughs> Kia ora, Rachel. Thanks for that. Yes, thank you very much. Cool. Awesome. Amazing. Kia ora, we're at Bellrow Health, and I'd like to introduce you to 2019 me. He's suffering from self-esteem issues, pain, and irritation because of a curable problem, acne. And he's not alone. No, he's one of the 90% of people who suffer from acne at some point in their life. That's where we come in. Bellrow's raw barberry powder is the first barberry product marketed towards acne in New Zealand and will be the first in the UAE. University studies have proven that barberries can reduce acne by up to 43% in the first month of daily use. We're very proud to have introduced this effective yet natural solution to over 2,500 Kiwis, and we hope to achieve the same in the UAE. Kaitiakitanga is at the heart of our business. Our product exemplifies care for people as we're able to improve physical well-being through the health benefits barberries offer, and we improve mental health through boosting people's confidence after their acne clears. Mental health issues among teens are at an all-time high, so giving teenagers one less thing to worry about is something we are extremely proud of. We also care for place by using fully recyclable packaging and reduce food waste by extracting the benefits from all parts of the berry. Our products perfectly show off New Zealand's knack for harnessing the power of natural solutions to solve problems. Barbaries have been a natural remedy used for thousands of years in the Middle East, and our Kiwi ingenuity allows the modern Emirati to reap the benefit through an easy consumption. 
As the UAE trends towards a Western diet, traditional ways of consuming barberries like Suresh Polo are becoming less common. Our reason to consume powder can be added to smoothies, muesli, and common Emirati breakfasts like chabab bread. We have also partnered to make the world's first commercial Barbary kombucha, a market growing at 25.3% in the Middle East. We also see potential collaborations with iconic brands like Convita Honey and A2 Milk to design an Aotearoa super smoothie. We are incredibly excited about the prospect of working with the University of Otago and their new multi-million dollar greenhouse. We aim to trial growing barberries in New Zealand. Who would have thought that three teenagers trying to fight acne would have the potential to unlock a new agricultural opportunity for New Zealand? Our research has found that now is the right time and the UAE is the right place for our exporting. As the UAE embraces Western culture, one side effect is the adoption of Western diets. The sugar, fatty acids and salt leads to acne. That's why acne rates in current Emirati youth are more than double the rate of their parents at 51%. The Dubai free trade zone eases the financial cost of exporting. In addition, there's a wealthy population who can afford to invest in their health and their 2071 centennial goal of having the healthiest population on the planet will further drive this. This is why it's the right time for us to enter the UAE market by using a unique spin on a berry they know while becoming established while there currently aren't as many competitors. The key success factor for us is meeting the regulations of the UAE, something we're proud to be working with MPI and consultants on by redesigning our packaging. Our broad target market is anyone with acne. We will be targeting the 700,000 teenagers with acne in the UAE who want a highly effective yet natural solution. These people are fed up with alternate solutions such as Accutane with its chemical solution causing side effects that are often just as bad, if not worse, than the acne itself. Focusing on the market of teenagers allows us to refine our marketing to best fit the people most likely to purchase our products. The unique story of teens solving a teenage problem has captivated media outlets in New Zealand and will do the same in the UAE. We've already had our photo featured on the homepage of the Nationals website, which has led to free inquiries already proving that we'd be highly successful in the UAE. This is an effective marketing strategy as it reaches a primarily older demographic who are typically the purchasers of our product on behalf of their children. We'd also aim for direct marketing through promotional material and health stores as we know that consumers trust their local health store. Our export strategy is to sell wholesale to health stores. We are confident that we can get stocked in UAE health stores as we will have references from over 80 New Zealand stores we're currently in. Our business model accommodates fluctuations in the exchange rate tariffs outside of Dubai and high retailer margins. We're confident that we can make a profit as a result of our 83% gross margin. We recognize exporting is expensive and we believe that with the $75,000 in revenue we've made, we can support the beginning of our export journey. We believe that our unique spin, our, our unique New Zealand spin on a Middle Eastern food not only shows off New Zealand's clean, green, natural way of solving global issues, but also is a perfect representation of what World Expos are, collaborating and combining aspects from all over the world through business. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kia ora. Fantastic. Thanks so much, uh, Robert. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Abby, for those slides. Excellent side work on the side there. Um, hey, so we have our judges, as we have had with our last pitches. You know how this goes. This time I'm going to start from uh, start with, rather, I should say, with Jamie. Well, thank you, Rachel. Well done, guys. I really enjoyed that. You've done some really great work there. Look, I... Um, I'm actually looking to pitch and would like to be on your board, but that's not the um, that's not the uh, <laughs> issue right now. But look, um, my question is about you know governance. Have you you know obviously when you are rolling out a strategy like this, have you considered um, assembling a board you know so you can feel like you're being guided around the the strategy? Definitely. So we are currently in the process of becoming a actual company, uh, moving past Young Enterprise. And with that, we are looking at setting up a board. So that's going to include ourselves, then uh, lots of people that have mentored us throughout the way, and then depending on certain things that we look to move into, say if we look to move into a cream, we'd want to have a dermatologist on that board, but lots of people that have expert knowledge. Well done. Thank you. You have to ask Jamie what his expert knowledge is before you let him through the <laughs> onto your board. Um, Sancha, what about your, yours, please? 
Congratulations, team. Fantastic presentation and well done on the amazing press. Um, and clearly, you know your target market, so I have a lot of confidence uh, in you guys. One of the things I was wondering about is, um, you know, you, you positioned yourself as a clean, green business. How are you going to respond to challenges about the distance uh, that your product is going to travel um, since you'll be growing the berries in New Zealand and need to ship it from, from New Zealand? Uh, definitely. So by growing barberries in New Zealand, uh, when working with the University of Otago, that cuts out one trip from the Middle East. And then uh, secondly, if we look to set up a production facility in the Middle East instead, then that would also um, cut out a separate trip to reduce carbon emissions. And then we'd also look at continuing to use recyclable packaging. Our new packaging is going to be biodegradable. And of course, things like offsetting our carbon emissions by paying for carbon credits. Terrific, thank you. Hey, well done, well done team. Um, and I know there's a third person who, and she's not on the screen at the moment. So well done to you all. Hey, um, <laughs> Look, my question is around market barriers, and you've talked a lot about your understanding of the, the UAE market. Um, <clears throat> is your product going to require some sort of health or supplement um, approval as well? Uh, yes. Yeah, so something that we're really lucky about is the fact that the Barbary is a recognised food in the Middle East. So something that we don't need to worry about is getting Barbary's added to the UAE's food register. That's something that lots of other New Zealand products would have to do. So when the first Manuka honey was exported, for example, that had to be added to a specific food register before it could go in. But since people in the Middle East already know what Barbary's are, our unique adaptation of them doesn't need to be part of that. But something that we would have to do is make sure that we meet specific labelling standards that are different different in the UAE versus New Zealand. But while we're redesigning our packaging to better target Emirati consumers and what, um, what interests they have, we're also going to make sure that that new packaging meets their regulations. Cool, fantastic. Hey, great to hear from you guys. Excellent, Thank thanks you. judges. I'll let you uh, whip away into your, into your own room and I'm gonna keep Abby and Robert and Alex on the line. So uh, you're our first um, team, team team that I've seen and we might have others coming after you, but, but what's the biggest lesson that you can share with us about being a team? Um, yeah, well, um, it, it's, it's great to have um, the strengths from, from, from different people. Um, it does come with its challenges, definitely comes with, the challenge, with challenges, but um, yeah, it, it, it's great and it's great fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, it's really good, um, as Alex said, that we all have things that we're good at. We all have things that we're not so good at. So having a diverse range of people uh, makes it really work well. Great. Um, Deborah from, has asked the question. She says, wow, that she needs this product stat for her daughter. And do you do online sales with shipping to the UAE yet? Um, we do. So we currently have shipped a few products internationally um, just by using courier service. Obviously, we'd like to get stocked in health stores in the UAE eventually. But um, if you flick us an email or a message through our online store, abelro.mystorby.com, then we'd be happy to arrange that. Abelro.mystorby.com. Yep. Com. All right. If you awesome. look up a bell row, it'll come up. Yeah. Okay. But tell me about the name. So, so bell row. <laughs> yeah. So I, feel like I might have um, asked you this before, but tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, a bell row. It's it's not incredibly creative, but it is the first two letters of each of our names. So A B for Abby, A L for Alex, and R O for Robert. It works. It works. It does work. Okay. It works. I don't yeah. know another Abel Row, so that's why it works. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, hey, look, you've got some really great feedback from Julie. Uh, she says, congratulations, Abel Row. Thank you for representing Otago so amazingly and confidently. We were blown away by you from your Otago, from your Otago Chamber of Commerce Fano. So that's really good. Awesome. Oh, thank, thank you so much. much. Yes, thank you so much. We appreciate the support from everybody that's worked with us and the Otago Chamber of Commerce in particular have been amazing. So thank you so much. And a big thank you to Eugene, who I, I hope's watching. She's been our mentor and it's been incredible through this journey. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, that's good. It, 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 oh, oh, look, it's, oh, Terry, Terry Shubkin, the Chief Entertainment Officer from the Young <gasps> Enterprise, who we love, has just put up your website on your behalf. So there's, that's awesome. Yeah. Thanks for hey, the um, 
I noticed a juice in your range, which mm. I really like the look of. So, so tell me, how did you get from the powder to the juice? Yeah, so um, our, our overall sort of vision is to become um, a really well-known health brand. Um, so our first product marketed towards acne. Um, and then we moving on using the same berry um, we've created that kombucha. So it's in collaboration with Kiss Kombucha, which I think it's mostly just a South Island brand. But, um, they, they make kombucha and they're an on-tap brand in cafes and stuff. So, so we've started that collaboration and we're just about to launch it actually. Great. Um, do you test out all those products on your family as well and make them sort of absolutely all your creations? <laughs> yeah, they're the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Is that what they're saying? No. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Hey guys, thank you very, very much. I'm sure that it is delicious and it's good for you. Our judges are back. So um good luck. Thanks so much for your pictures. Sure, thank Thanks. you. Builder. All righty. Miss Holly, we are gonna go now to Tai Finua in Tamaki Makoto, Auckland. We have Holly. Uh, from Taifunua and over to you. Yada, thank you so much. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals detail the end of worldwide homelessness by 2030. In order to achieve this international goal, we need to implement a global strategy. Oh, wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, that's so good. Could you have slides, um, Holly? Or... Maybe I should share my screen. That might help. <laughs> it's okay. You're just warming everyone up. It's all good. Now we're like super ready for you. We've got a little. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals detail the end of worldwide homelessness by 2030. In order to achieve this international goal, we need, an, we need to implement a global strategy that is environmentally sustainable and focuses on rehabilitation to ensure the well-being of international whānau. Huri tō aro aro ki rā ko Aotearoa mō tēnei wā poto. Assalamu alaikum, si hei, mauri ora. Kia ora, we are Tai Whenua. Founded by Bella Nola as Communications and Marketing Manager, Vanessa Din as Operations Manager, Brian Jin as CFO, and myself, Holly Timmons, as CEO. We are passionate about creating this global initiative through the use of our Taipinawa property. Taipinawa is a business creating communities and providing safe temporary housing to those in need. We plan to do this by recycling and upcycling shipping containers to provide a housing, op housing option that abides by a clean green image, showing the world values like manakitanga, caring for people, and matauranga Māori, caring for our environment. The property is set to contain five whare, private sleeping pods, a 40 foot rumakoko and kehini, bathroom and kitchen areas, as well as a shared living space. This layout has been validated in New Zealand through organizations such as Lifewise NZ, Edel Property Trust and Oranga Tamariki to ensure that this will work to benefit the homeless community of Aotearoa. However, the issue of housing is much larger than our New Zealand backyard, affecting approximately 150 million people worldwide. This is why we've decided to expand our horizons and look, forward, look towards catering to the international epidemic of those living in condemned or unfit housing conditions with a distinctive New Zealand flair. Similarities between Te Ao Māori and traditional Arab cultures can be seen from the greetings of pressing noses to firm spiritual beliefs. Most prominently, prominently though, is perhaps the concept and deep value of whānau and kāinga, or village living. Because of this, we believe that introducing Taipanua into the UAE will work not only to promote our unique New Zealand culture to a larger global audience, but also provide a place where village living introduces a matchless multicultural space. We can lean into these similarities when marketing our solution into the UAE to make an attractive alternative. In Aotearoa, our focus is mainly on Māori and Pacifica rangatahi youth to provide a preventative measure to homelessness later in life, as we have identified this to be the largest population of homelessness. However, in the UAE, where the government provides housing to a lot of its residents, the number of those left without housing is tiny in comparison, affecting mostly immigrant workers due to a recent spike in job losses caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. This effective population is approximately a thousand people, allows Tai Whenua a manageable market entry demographic. Because our model is designed to house a number of people for a period of around three to six months, our property will provide an effective housing alternative for seasonal workers and those working on products, projects. Kaitia Kitanga and the overall value of guardianship is something that Tai Whenua has implemented into every aspect of the business. 
from our units being fully kitted with initiatives such as composting toilets, solar power and grey water tanks to our overall goal of whakafanaungatanga and the interest of keeping people safe and secure in the units we provide, perfectly encompassing the theme of caring for people and place. In Aotearoa, we've estimated the cost of development, the entire of the Papali, at around $500,000, including labour costs and insurance. To fundraise this, we've been actively seeking sponsorship and partnerships to accommodate costs and ensure we're able to start the building of our first container in 2025. In order to be financially viable in the UAE, we've looked into adopting a housing first model in which the Taifenawa property units are purchased by the government and placed on government owned lands. This is viable because our units are portable and will place all of the location and eligib eligibility requirements in the hands of local leaders. After all, me mahi tahi tato, mo te oranga o te kato. We should work together for the well-being of everyone. Let's work together to ensure our global whānau have a place to stay, because even if only for a short time, it's important that we come together for the well-being of everyone. He aha te menui o te ao, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. What is the most important thing in the world? The people, the people, the people. Shukran and thank you. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Awesome. Kia ora, Holly. Really awesome. Exactly. Whoever um, said that. A really, really amazing cause, amazing um, thinking in terms of solution. Uh, so, Sancha, what, is your, what, your, what might your question be for Holly, please? Um, we just got a great for you here. Thank you, Holly. I loved uh, your definition and how Kaiteka Shanga shows up not just for the well-being of um, the people, but also in the design of your product. Um, that's very, very powerful. I'm interested in how um, you will protect this idea from others being able to copy it, since it's such a fantastic idea. Um, well, this idea has been kind of adapted from other kind of similar products. I know in America, they have a similar thing where they have like smaller units, but they're not made out of containers and things. So I don't know, maybe we could copyright it, put a patent on it or something. But um, ideally we were looking to start franchises so that everyone else in other countries internationally can start their own sort of um, spin on this kind of idea because you know, homelessness is a huge global issue. Clayton. Kia Holly. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation and and because I've met you and your team before as well. So it's um, it, it's good to see you again. Hey Holly, I'm just looking at the UAE market and um, and my particular question is whether or not you've given any thought to air conditioning uh, and the, and the fact that this is a this is an environment where without air conditioning you can't um, survive really. So <laughs> absolutely. Another thing with uh, air conditioning and heating as well is uh, we've, we've our each of the housing units have these things called thermal wraps around them. So it's kind of like a heat mediator, which will also help to combat that as well. So definitely looking okay. uh, looking towards something like that. Thank you. Okay, well done, um, Holly. Thank you for your presentation. Um, my questions around your market goals and and if you could just maybe give me a sense of what does success look like for you um, in regards to Tai Whenua? Um, I suppose even if we were to house uh, one person from homelessness, that would be a, a success for us. Um, I think it's the way that we kind of push more into rehabilitation. So not just putting a house over this person's head, but keeping them in housing for a long time after that. So definitely nice. that would be success for us. Kia ora. Oh, Thank you. Amazing. Thanks judges and thanks again Holly. Uh, while the judges are jumping out, um, how are you feeling? Are you good? <laughs> how about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just buzzing on um, you know your presentations and where the ideas come from and the thinking behind them. So <laughs> Um, no, I always love these days and love hearing your, uh, these amazing ideas. Um, question for you. Are you okay? Is your one frozen up or are you still there? Or is my one frozen uh, up? It's a little, 
maybe it's frozen up. Is it? How's that from Yorin Holly? Is it? Um, no. Well, but Kelly is. Is it okay from Yorin Kelly? Ah, frozen. I think it's Holly. Yeah, no. that's okay. <laughs> Oh, no, that's okay. Oh, if I can hear you, that's okay. Well, I, I'll just hear you and we won't be able to see you until you come back on. But hey, um, so Holly, you had some amazing contacts in there who were speaking about your product. You had Ngati Fatua, you had LifeWise, you had Nick Mowbray. So how did you go about making those contacts? Um, LifeWise and Z was a really big contact for us. So from then we got at our property trust and a lot of their members are actually Māori, which is amazing. So we got you know, Ngati Whātua or Pōtaka Marae from them. And um, it's really important to us that we have that kind of relationship with local iwi and local marae. So we hope to expand that as we expand in New Zealand. And uh, Nick Rovray, actually, he was doing a an event at AUT and I kind of just bothered him until he would speak to me. That uh, is, yeah. That is literally the most perfect way to make good contacts is just to surprise them. <laughs> Surprise them with your amazingness. So that's how <laughs> that goes. Um, on the feedback, I don't know if you can see it, Holly, but um, you know, love your ethos, Holly, and Taifinoa team, such an important topic. That's from um, Kelly, um, Ivy Huang, who says, such a great idea. Excited to see your team bring this life by 2025 and that, um, and that you're living and breathing kaitiakitanga. So amazing job, Kelly. Really, really love your work and uh, good luck for the challenge. Oh, <laughs> All righty. Hey, so um, Lucky Lars now. Lucky Lars, going to bring it all the way home, Devet. So I'm going to hand it straight to you. I know you've been watching and listening as well, so I'm sure that you're ready to give us your pitch. And the floor is yours, Devet, from uh, Keto Sec in Hamilton. Awesome. Thank you very much. Just want to share my screen. Can everyone just want to confirm, can people see that? <clears throat> sure can. Awesome. All right, I'll just jump right into it. The world as we know, it faces many problems, whether it's being its resources, economy, or people. CO2 emissions have skyrocketed, with livestock leading the charge. Weight loss is appealing to millions, and common elderly sickness is ever-present. My name is Devet Groves, and my business enterprise idea is to sell keto-relevant products in ready-made packs, starter packs and snack packs. Each pack will include common keto products that my consumer will need to begin and maintain the keto journey. My business aims to target and tackle the problems of inadequate marketing and execution of an amazing idea that has shown strong pathways to the universal betterment of ourselves and our world. New Zealand is a unique um, country ranking very highly in multiple standards countries tested. Along with being the safest and least corrupt, New Zealand's pride also rests in the stunning quality of materials such as livestock, agriculture and elements. KetoSec thrives on this quality with its products, sourcing high quality ethical ingredients for our international customers to enjoy. Keto has a, has a very strong ties to Kaitia Kitanga, and I want to show this to the world in the best way possible. Kaitia Kitanga, meaning guardianship and resource management, is easily applicable through the keto diet. To better convey the alignment and connection that keto has, you must understand just how many benefits keto poses to you and your environment. The two main elements that keto benefits is the physical and psych psych physiological health of humans, and when practiced correctly, the environment as well. Keto's main side effects is dramatic weight loss, where your body is deprived of carbs and sugar and recognizes fat as energy. There's also shown evidence as an effective preventative measure for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, seizures, cardiovascular health, and reduced acne. Keto emphasizes less protein from animals to be consumed and encourages to buy locally and organically. This has a great effect on CO2 emissions, which livestock is 60% responsible for, just in New Zealand. Ketosac centric ideas are based around local New Zealand source products and internationally envy quality. Sustainability, taking extra measures to ensure bioethical standards are met, such as eco-friendly packaging. And lastly, convenience, having all your keto needs in one place. When it came to market selection, many critical factors played a role in selecting the correct market. Most importantly, the validity of the keto diet in the country of choice. How big is the trend, the growth of the diet, etc.? This will be evident through demographics, capital, and competition. Minimal barriers are also preferred to ensure smooth distribution of my product. Taking all of these into consideration, the market I've chosen to export into is the United Arab Emirates. 
United Arab Emirates presents many barriers when considering exportation, even more for a foodstuff product. Most prominently, regulations and compliance need to be met before any selling commences. Linguistic claims must be monitored as it plays a role in the validation of my product. And lastly, additional costs will incur as my product demands more care and attention. I'll be using direct and indirect channels of distribution beginning in New Zealand to uphold the high New Zealand quality prowess. Indirect channels to various retailers will be utilized as well as direct channels from an online based platform giving my customer the personal touch in their purchase, a highly craved attribute that my potential customers will seek. I plan to cement this online platform to be similar to a my food bag approach of selling. My basic process, um, here's on the side, just a um, list of my suppliers. The basic process of product distribution will be to source my product from here in New Zealand from various suppliers, ship the raw products to UAE, assemble the packs in the UAE through contractor work and food grade kitchens and warehouses, and distribute from there to retailers and my consumers online. The target market I've analyzed in the UAE is women aged 41 to 50 who love in-store shopping, has a deep love for family and want to change their diet for healthier options. I focused on women because despite the lower than 30% population, women actually influence over 85% of purchases made. Majority of these purchases are made in-store in malls and supermarkets. Unlike New Zealand, the marketing of my business must be approached in a different manner, taking advantage of the big public infrastructure and the common habits of the general population. Considering this, I have chosen to use commercial and radio advertisements as my primary methods, with a large public digital marketing campaign run as well. I'll also be using social media platform and then validation for medical professional support. Locations of sales that I will use in the UAE will be predominantly be supermarkets, prefer preferring supermarkets over hypermarkets because hypermarkets are food complexes that sell at a discounted rate. Because my food is a health alternative, I'll rather sell in places where customers will be prepared to pay the price. With the big presence of keto cafes and smaller stores, I'll place my product there as, cu as customers will be drawn to the keto business. Additionally, I'll run an online website. I've presented a promising promote proposal to you all in the hopes that together we'll, we'll be able to achieve national and global goals to better our people, our economy, and our precious environment. I believe this is entirely achievable with the correct idea, planning, and execution. I want to leave this message to everyone who struggles with these personal or society problems through my slogan, Keto Made Simple. Brilliant. Awesome. Thanks, David. No worries. It's like, no worries. You're worried. <laughs> hey, but now it's, you're not quite off the hooks yet because we know yeah. we've got some questions from our um, judges. And I'm going to start with you, Clayton. Uh, kia ora, David. Uh, great presentation. My, my question is about your packaging, actually. Uh, you talk yep. about the it's the go-to-market packaging. I'm just wanting to understand, is it, is it a sustainability angle to it or is it an accessibility angle? What, what, what's the nature of that packaging? Yeah, no, so um, a, lot, a big part of it is the sustainability. So we'll be using um, biodegradable packaging in paper bags um, with a, a, um, a window seal just to see what the ingredient is. Um, I will also, and then that, that'll all be, because it's in the ready-made pack, that'll all be um, packed in the box, um, similar to the uh, My Food Bag or HelloFresh um, product, um, oh. rather than, yeah, just to make it easier when shipping to my consumer. Fantastic. Great. Thank you. Hunter. David, well done. Great presentation. Um, I was really impressed with your understanding of uh, your supply chain. Can you um, tell me what thought you've done in terms of the partners uh, that you'll need throughout that supply chain? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Um, similarly, in New Zealand, I will need a food grade kitchen and um, food grade kitchen and resources to be able to even assemble my product because of the hygiene and regulation and compliance um, rules. Um, the um, other partnerships, I, I want to do, I want to create good partnerships with businesses such as the supermarkets where I will be looking to sell most of my products. Um, but um, yeah, that's, it's a, um, about the main ones. Yeah. Great. Okay. And um, from me, thank you, Devet. Um, this question is about market positioning. Where, where do you see the product being sort of um, positioned? Um, you know, on the on the sort of the spectrum of um, uh, sort from of a, from a consumer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, so what I found um, in New Zealand, I'll start with that, is, is there's a, a lack of keto marketing in supermarkets and stores all across New Zealand. Um, or, um, taking into account the growth that keto has globally and the recognition it has all over the world, there has not there has been a, just a lack of keto marketing in New Zealand. When you walk into a supermarket, um, there isn't just, I, I want my, con, my um, consumer to be able to see just keto marketed products right up there so that they know that's where they go, where they can get 100% keto trusted products. That's the other thing is um, companies, there's a lot of misbranding and a um, misunderstanding of what is allowed in the keto diet. So um, some food that's actually sold on and marketed as keto products isn't 100% keto. And um, yeah, I just want, I want that to be the same case for my customers in the UAE. Um, just walking into the supermarket or the store, um, being able to fully trust my brand. Um, it is another, I think another big USP for me is it's New Zealand sourced. Um, as um, I think Max mentioned in his pitch and I also found it too, is it's a very, um, it's um, the, yeah, it's an envy quality and UAE um, customers do, um, do love New Zealand sourced um, ingredients and materials. Oh, well done. Hey, awesome. Thanks, Devet. I'm going to say uh, farewell probably for the last time to our judges. They're going to go and make their final deliberations and then, and then they'll be back. And while they are doing that, I think that all of our teams are going to be jumping into the screen and I have some questions uh, for you guys. And while that's happening, Devet, since I didn't have a chance to ask you any questions, um, yep. uh, can I eat hangi on keto? This is a very important question. Hangi, am I un, am I in the sense where you cook um, the food underground? Yeah, yeah, meat, potatoes, yeah. kura. Okay, so um, potatoes is unfortunately a, uh, it's a big no because Feels of the, like high, the high starchy um, contents of, of them. Oh. Um, kumara and pumpkin, there is, um, there are um, many keto experts and doctors use a, um, just a green, orange and red type approach um, where red is an absolute no-go green is um, perfectly fine and orange is um, yes you can have it but in um, very good moderation so kumara and pumpkin does fall into that. Um, I think the problem that you've just referenced though might be moderation for me that's like we've just had, <laughs> we've just had a stumbling block people <laughs> we've got a deal breaker in our hands um, yeah. and as you're talking about keto I'm like so throwing down popcorn hey um Everyone's on the screen now, which is great. So you guys can unmute yourself unless there's something crazy happening in your background. But so here's my question. Um, what is something that you would be super excited for if you were to go to Dubai? Because like one, or if you're a team, you know, one of you is going. So, so what are you excited for? Maya, what would you be excited for? Oh, have we got you on mute? Are you, are you working? Sorry. Is it good? Go. I've never yeah. left New Zealand, so I would be excited to leave New Zealand. Love New Zealand, but <laughs> nice. <to be laughs> but I'm out. <laughs> what about you, Holly? Oh, probably just like the opportunity to experience different culture, mm -hmm. especially at the New Zealand, like the expo, like yeah. all of the cultures in one place would be awesome. Yeah. What about um, Abelro? You guys, what would excite you the most about getting to Dubai? For me personally, um, it would be so cool to present our products, um, but also just gaining so much inspiration from other businesses and um, young entrepreneurs there. I think it would be great and taking that back. Um, Abby and I are both doing an entrepreneurship course next year here in Otago. Um, so going into a course following that trip would be incredible. Yeah. And for me, I'd say it's probably just how incredible World Expos of the past have been, knowing the amazing things that have been displayed there and having a chance to go there in person and see some of the future's next great inventions would be a really cool thing. What about you, Abby? Um, <laughs> just the learning opportunities, really. I think everyone at the Expo has something to share and something to teach. So we really would just be soaking up so much knowledge, yeah, that we could put into our business. Great. Max? Well, like you said before, Rachel, um, contacts, I like contacts, so um, I guess there's no better networking event than that, really. Um, yeah. And yeah, 
connecting with like-minded individuals, I suppose. So yeah, that'd probably be the biggest uh, excitement for me. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, David, what would your be, you be? What would you be most excited about for Dubai? Um, I think I'd just be blown away by just the um, magnitude of um, because of the Expo um, 2020. Just um, you're there, and it's the top businesses in the world, and you'll just be just be awesome to be a part of that, and just to see what's what's out there and what people have come up with. Yeah. No, I think um, whoever goes, I'll, I'll be a bag carrier. I've only been as, into the Dubai airport, um, which I'm not sure is a great representation of the whole, I mean, it's a great airport, but I'm not sure it's, an, it's as much as you guys are going to be seeing. Um, so you're all amazing pitchers. You're all amazing speakers. And I just wanted to commend you on that because I know it's really hard. And I'm just going to pick on one person because this is the last question because our judges are all coming back, I think. Um, so let me go to um, a bell row. And one of you can answer this. How do you grow your confidence in, in pitching? How does that work? Uh, sure, I'll take it. So I think just practicing so many times and the biggest piece of advice that our mentor gave us at our final practice was just to pretend like this is another practice, not to focus on the fact that there's an audience, but just to um, think that it's just a normal practice and you're just talking about the business that you're so passionate about. Great. Mm. Also, amazing. And I loved it. And it totally showed through for all of you, just, you know, that you love your businesses because that's a huge determinant of whether or not you come across the way that you did. You obviously all do. And our judges are back. So we're kind of like the excitement is mounting here. So Clayton, Jamie and Sancha really would love to hear your thoughts. Um, let's start with you, Jamie. Thank you, Rachel. Congratulations to everyone. You can now relax and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. So for me, look, I think every pitch had a really strong sort of intent or purpose, and I have to commend you all for presenting presenting that. Um, and, you know, I, I, I have to also sort of um, celebrate with you around the kind of depth of analysis around the competitive strategies, you know what I mean, or the, the, how you're trying to sort of... Um, um, frame your, your business model. So congratulations there. But one of the things I just want to leave you with here is around um, continue to, to try and be desirable or understand your end consumer. And so that's that's always the big thing. So yeah, all the best. And it's really a privilege. You've all got one over me. I'm not, I'm not a CEO and all of you guys are. So congratulations. Thanks, Jamie. Sancha. Yeah, three things from me and, and congratulations to, to all of you. It was very impressive. Um, I was really blown away by your personal stories and your personal connections to your businesses. They had real heart and uh, stories you know, connected to, to well-being and the land. Um, I'd also be really proud of all of you to be representatives of New Zealand uh, offshore. So, you know, as... Um, guardians of, of New Zealand and our brand, um, you all gave me great confidence. But I guess most of all, um, what really inspired me today was that all of your products um, would make a difference in the world. One thing we say is New Zealand is good for the world and, and all of your products are, so, so well done. Great. And Clayton, I know that you have some feedback, but I also know that you're making our big the, announcement. The drum so roll. Saying, yeah, but exactly. I, 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 I don't want to repeat uh, what what Jamie and Sancho have said because you know these these pictures were awesome, and uh, I just, you know I really appreciate the pressure there is on these things. But um, you know, even though it was going fast, we really were able to pick up um, all of that that detail, the passion, and of that connection with Kaitiakitanga. And care for people in place, which is our theme at Expo, is, is something that is resonating incredibly well, um, not only in this market, but in the broader region. Uh, as they, as we're, It's not just talking about sustainability, but it's talking about people's influence and connection with nature and that integration there. So uh, awesome, really, really, really we're blown away, as, as, as Sancha said. Um, so it's come to me to announce our winners, and this was a very, very tough choice. So we uh, we, we we had quite a deliberation over um, uh, over the the final scores because they're such strong pitches. And, and first of all, compliments to everyone. Um, 
So without further ado, the Global Kaitiaki Program winner is actually a Thai. Uh, and we've, uh, so we're going to announce two winners, um, joint winners, and we love to host both teams in Dubai in January 2022. So a huge congratulations to uh, Max at Green Kiwi and the Albaru Health Team. Uh, so really wanted to, you know, congratulate you. We, we also wanted to say, uh, Maya, um, you're high, highly commended in terms of your, your product. This is where it was a very close um, discussion, but uh, you're you know, high, highly commended in terms of what you did. And, um, you know, we're really, really, really impressed as well. So a huge congratulations though to, to Green Kiwi and Albaura Health. Um, looking forward to being able to greet you when you arrive up here, and um, I'll be very, very proud to introduce you to all the all the all the people and teams that we, we've got planned for you up here. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jason. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank and you. congratulations, Max. It'll be great to go with you. Uh, well, I'm I'm glad I've got some company now. <laughs> <laughs> And let's tell you what, you're joining an amazing lineup of speakers. If you follow us on, on social media, you'll see what Paris Global has got planned. It's uh, it's going to be a very exciting month when you're out, time when you're up here. So look, really, really looking forward to that. Um, but and thanks to you. Thanks to you, Sancha and Jamie as well. Really appreciate the opportunity and your time. Definitely. Awesome. And look, it's, it's tell you just my final words is it's really exciting to see young people who've got successful businesses, who are passionate about uh, Kaitiakitanga, passionate about New Zealand. Um, and, and so yeah, that is just really, really awesome. Thank you, Liz and Terry uh, from Young Enterprise. You've been partnering with NZ at Expo now for two years, um, making this program happen, uh, working with the NZT team. Uh, just, uh, it's just been a really awesome experience. Uh, What's really exciting is that this year we're doing this and able to actually give the prize because the expo is, is happening. Um, and thank you, of course, to Sancha and, and Jamie. It's been great working with you on this as well. Lastly, Rachel Kapai, thank you very much for, for being our MC and, and keeping everyone motivated and entertained while uh, Sancha, Jamie and I have been deliberating. So, na mihi nui. My pleasure. Hey, thank you, Clayton. I'm so, so stoked for you guys. Um, we actually do have Terry on the line, and she's just going to say a couple of words from Young Enterprise, so maybe we can bring her up now. That'd be great. Uh, kia ora, everyone, and wow, what an amazing hour and a bit to spend my life doing. Um, so thank you, Clayton, for the shout out. I'd do the same in reverse. Um, we have loved partnering with New Zealand at Expo and Clayton and Kelly and your entire team. Um, these things don't happen with a lot of uh, a lot of work and a lot of effort. So thank you for your vision and working so well together. Uh, Clayton, Sancha and Jamie, thank you for being voluntold again. As judges, you're amazing. Rach, thanks for letting me volunteer you as the MC. Um, we always joke that you don't uh, do this on your own. So it takes a village to raise an entrepreneur. And I had a quick squiz on who was online. And I saw Fano, I saw mentors, I saw teachers, I saw regional coordinators. Um, I probably saw some people who are your first clients. So to the entire village that has supported these five teams, thank you very much. And my final shout out and thank you goes to the young people that pitched today. Um, so Holly and the entire Tefinua uh, team, uh, Devin, Maya, Max, and the Barrow team of Robert, Abby, and Alex, you guys are amazing. Um, I thank you for not just the hard work you've put in, for just being an inspiration. Um, you'll sometimes hear people say that you are our future. You are the future business leaders, and I'm going to challenge you to sit back at them. You're not our future, you are our present. Watching what you guys have done today, you are our current business leaders. And what you've shown is that uh, you can actually take the concept of Kaitiakitanga and not make it an add-on to your business, but make it a core part of what you do. So on behalf of everyone at Young Enterprise, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Amazing. Thanks, Thanks Terry. Terry. Very you well said, you. Yeah, amazing end to our afternoon. Thank you to everyone who's been online watching. Thanks for joining us. It's been my absolute pleasure. Terry knows really well. This is my biggest buzz. And, you know, and anything I do, the Nationals Judging Day and experiences like this are kind of my extreme moments uh, to get to be around you guys. 
So I wish you guys all the best. I wish you students really um, good luck on your journeys. Keep working as hard as you have been. Uh, for those who aren't going to Dubai, you're going to keep going with your companies anyway. So shout out to Young Enterprise if you need a hand. You're all part of the alumni, which makes you part of the Fano of Young Enterprise and also now of New Zealand Trade and Enterprise and uh, Dubai Expo. So thank you very much. Ka kite, ma te wa. Enjoy the rest of your week. It's nearly the weekend and um, stay safe, everyone. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thanks, Rachel.